how to get amazing sleep so you can recover from your judo practice, your BJJ practice, or whatever martial arts that you do. What's up guys, Hong Nguyen, OG Fitness. Welcome back to the channel. If you guys are new, this channel is all about fitness for martial arts for older guys. And if you're young, you won't be for long. <laughs> okay, so in this video, we're gonna talk about quality sleep for recovery. Now, I'm gonna use the 80-20 principle, Pareto's uh, principle, Pareto's law. So only 20% of the things that you do will give you 80% of your results, okay? And also, 80% of the time, you wanna be doing the right things, 20% of the time, you know, you could be doing a little stuff that are a little bit more nonsensical and you'll still be a-okay. All right, so there's a lot of things out there, but I'm gonna tell you guys what I think is the most important things that you guys need to, to know and stuff that you could do right away that aren't, that won't cost you anything, you know? So in terms of sleep, seven to nine hours, that's what the average person needs. I personally can sleep anywhere between eight to 10 no problem. If I pass 10, I find it's too much. Then I'm a little bit uh, groggy. It takes me more time to get activated in the morning. But seven to nine. So you're gonna have to figure that out uh, for yourself. It's genetics. That's the important thing. So you need a certain amount of sleep. Anything under six hours, you're kind of you're kind of screwed. You're gonna you're not gonna feel good. And lack of sleep is a really really bad thing. Okay, it's the equivalent of if you don't get enough quality sleep. You know, and quality and quantity are somewhat related when it comes to sleep. You know, you can't, you can't sleep like three hours and have amazing quality sleep. You need a certain amount of time. So if you have less than six hours sleep, a couple of days in a row, it's like the equivalent of, I think, um, being drunk or being under the influence. This is from what I read, okay? The ideal time, 10 p.m. to 6 a.m. That's the ideal window where you should be in bed, right? And then, so you would go to sleep, you would pass out at 10 and you would wake up at six. Solid eight hours, you know, give or take. The room has to be pitch black. So you can't have any uh, lights coming through the window or a whole bunch of electronics like with blinking lights on, like you gotta get rid of that. You have to have the room has to be lower temperature. So you have to decrease the temperature of the room, you're gonna sleep better that way. And then you sleep under your covers and it's a little bit cold, you know, it's, it's gonna be a good thing. Uh, make sure, and this is what a lot of people don't talk about, because the thing is, a lot of times we go to bed at the time that we're supposed to, and then we can't fall asleep. So if you can't fall asleep, then it kind of screws up your, your, your timing there. So you have to make sure that at the end of the day, you're dead tired. So it shouldn't take you more than five, 10 minutes to fall asleep. Okay. So do what you have to do to be dead tired by the end of the day, exercising, moving a lot, doing a lot of, you know. Um, physical as well as mental activity so that you're really drained at the end of the day you gave it your all now you're about to pass out okay go to bed on an empty stomach yes empty stomach so no food between three to four hours before you go to bed because if your body has if you eat before bed then what happens is that your stomach is going to be digested and if it's working at night digesting food it takes away from the recovery of the sleep so you don't want to be digesting food when you're actually supposed to be recovering during that window while you're asleep Okay, and the other thing is, don't stimulate your brain before bed. So ideally, you want to be, you don't want to be watching a movie, okay, or like scrolling around on social media. You're better off reading a book, okay? And of course, and one last thing that really helps is taking a hot shower before bed. Because when you take a hot shower, okay, it heats up your body, and then when you come out of the shower, your body it cools down naturally, right? So when it cools down, your temperature drops, and then it's time to go to bed. That's why that's... That makes sense because if you have to lower the temperature of the room, that's what you're trying to do anyway. So if you lower the temperature of the room, take hot shower, come out, body cools down on its own, jump into bed, it'll make it easier for you to fall asleep and the quality will be a lot better. So that's it for this video, guys. Um, tell me what you think, what you guys do to get good quality sleep. And the more, the older I get, the more I realize that I don't want to mess with, like, with my sleep, man. Anything that affects my sleep, so alcohol would affect my sleep. Staying up too late, staying up like after 12, man, like I've noticed that I could, it's not ideal, but if I stay up till midnight, go to bed, okay, sure. But if I pass midnight, it messes me up the next day. Like I'm not at hundred percent. So because I'm more happy when I wake up and I'm energized and I'm feeling good and my mind is clear, 
like I won't do any of the things that I used to do that would mess up my sleep. And it's just not worth it for me. That's it for this video. So if you guys like that, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. And follow me on IG and ask me questions there. I'll answer you directly. That's for this one. Peace.